Have you ever found yourself out of money to get on the subway? Have you ever jumped a turnstile? There's no doubt that every one of you watching right now that travels underground has either beaten the fare or witnessed people doing it. While this turnstile jumping clearly costs the MTA money, for offenders who are caught, it could land them in jail. According to the Division of Criminal Justice Services, last year over 18,000 people were busted for beating the fare. Now, a new report by The Marshall Project, a nonprofit news organization focused on criminal justice, is shedding a new light on these arrests with some startling conclusions. Joining me with the findings is Anna Flagg, the author of Subway Policing in New York City Still Has a Problem. Anna, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So first off, let's start with what were the findings of your report? So we found that arrests for turnstile jumping and other forms of fare evasion have dropped significantly since last year. So last year, uh, Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance announced that his office was going to stop prosecution of most cases. So we went from something like 25,000 cases in 2016 to this year being on track to do probably less than 10,000 arrests for turnstile jumping. And of course, that falls in line with the change in the broken windows policing um, policy. Yes. Um, but one thing that hasn't changed, though, is who is getting arrested for turnstile jumping. Nine out of 10 of those arrested for turnstile jumping are black or Hispanic, and this is the same as it's been for years. So even though the numbers have gone down, the demographics who are being at least uh, arrested for this has not changed. That's correct. So what is the effect then of, uh, at least on these communities, of them being the ones who are getting arrested for a crime that seemingly everyone in New York has committed possibly one way or the other? Yeah, I mean, I would say that According to the MTA's research, this all evidence points to this being a crime of poverty. So it is something that is more likely to affect um, people of color, neighborhoods of color, and low-income neighborhoods. So I think that's where you're going to see the greatest impact. So then what is uh, to be done about this? Because we have seen, you know, there's been programs where, of course, there's discounted MTA cards. Um, there's other some programs uh, that are available to people, and yet you still have this problem happening. I'm sure there's people who are going to say, you know, uh, we've made a way for you to be able to get onto the subway in a manner that's going to cost less and isn't illegal. So if you're not taking those steps, then it's on you when you get arrested. Yeah, I mean, I think what poverty advocates would probably say is that um, fair fares was definitely a step forward, and that's making a lot of progress. So a lot more people are now going to be able to afford the subway. But I don't know whether they think it goes far enough to make um, public transit affordable to everyone. Well, what is, is there anything specific that's being proposed? Yeah, I think a lot of people are just calling for decriminalization of turnstile jumping. I, I think the question is, why would we treat a parking violation as a civil offense that you get something like a ticket for and turnstile jumping is a criminal offense. So you get arrested, you might be incarcerated, and you have a permanent criminal record. But at the same time, couldn't you possibly say that if we decriminalize it, then you're giving people the go ahead to go ahead and continue doing this? Well, there are still consequences because you can still be stopped and you get issued a civil summons and you probably pay a fine. It's a $100 fine. That's significant. Of course. For the people who are getting uh, arrested for this, now you were saying that, of course, this is seen largely as a crime of poverty. Um, but are there any other factors that are going into who gets arrested? Because, as we said in the, inter the intro, that a lot of people have probably either seen or seen friends or something like that do this. And I'm talking about people who wouldn't fall under the umbrella of living in poverty in New York. Mm -hmm. So is this something where perhaps uh, enforcement needs to be more broader? Um, well, I haven't heard people calling for more broad enforcement. I guess what I've heard is, OK, so according to the MTA's research, it's linked to poverty. So we have it being a crime that is more likely to be committed by someone who's in poverty than someone who's not. But there's also these racial disparities that um, are that extend beyond poverty. So according to the mayor's office uh, report, about half of New Yorkers um, or half of New Yorkers in poverty are black or Hispanic. But still, you have nine out of 10 people arrested for turnstile jumping are black or Hispanic. So poverty doesn't account for the racial disparities in arrests. So mm -hmm. I think this brings up a lot of questions, both on the fairness of the policing 
and on the people that it's having an impact on. These are communities of color. These are people in poverty. Was there any indication that there were any particular hot spots, I don't know how else to describe it, of locations where people were getting the most caught and arrested for doing this? Yeah, so what struck me the most um, when we did our research, we looked at it by police precinct. So there are 77 police precincts across New York City, and we just kind of mapped it out. And it struck me um, that there's a really close match between the precincts that the, have the highest numbers of turnstile arrests per subway swipe and the neighborhoods of color in the city. So the top 10 precincts that have the highest arrest rates per swipe are all predominantly black or Hispanic. All right, well, again, uh, it's something that we've all definitely seen um, in our travels underground, and it's good to know that at least there are steps being taken to address this issue. And I wanna thank you for your reporting and bringing um, the data of all of this to light, and definitely join us again on the program. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thank you.